All right. Now, let's see. We should be live on my Facebook page. And I want to go from... Facebook page and I want to share it on the group page. All right. Hey, everybody. It is your girl Cynthia or Cindy, as my friends call me and my clients. It's good to see everybody tonight. It's glad to, I'm glad to have you on live. Um, have a very special guest tonight. You guys already know enough about me, um, but I'll give you a little bit more information. I'm the owner of CLS Management Small Business and Consulting. My passion is to help entrepreneurs be the best version of themselves to create thriving and thriving businesses that they can scale, businesses that leave a legacy, businesses that grow, that help you create generational wealth, financial stability, but uh, to most importantly, fulfill your purpose and to help others by serving them is really what most of us are in, in business for, not just to make money, but to actually do something great. So without further ado, Oh, and before I get into all of that, thank you guys for joining. I appreciate every single one of our viewers tonight. It's going to be super, super important that you guys share this live um, on your own feeds and your groups on your own business pages because you guys are business owners. All of this is information to help you grow your business. And tonight is all about business credit. So if it's one thing that a lot of people have been asking me about lately um, in the group and otherwise in general is what is business credit? How do I get it? Where does it start? Um, how do I make it better? What do I need to do to apply for it? Or how can I use it to help build my business and expand it? All of those are questions that I hear all the time. You too, Katina? Yep. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> so we're going to be diving into that tonight. So you guys share this live, um, give us some feedback, talk to us on it. We're here to answer your questions as well. Um, but invite friends, tag other entrepreneurs and business owners, you know, or even people that are thinking about owning their own business. But uh, without further ado, I want to introduce you to our special guest tonight. Um, so her name is Katina Davenport. And Miss Katina is the founder and CEO of k &D Consulting Enterprises. She works alongside with her husband, DeAndre Davenport. Um, both of them, uh, she also ho she hosts a television show called Elevate Your Love Life, which streams on the One God TV network. In addition to being an entrepreneur, as if that wasn't enough, she's a powerhouse. Katina is also a homeschool mom of three children, um, three lovely children. Let me see if I can remember them. Miracle Grace, Judah, and Joy are yeah. the three amazing kids that she's homeschooling. She graduated from the University of Michigan in Dearborn in 2004 with a degree in international studies. Um, and although she never got a chance to work in that particular field, um, her many interests led her to becoming the woman that she is today, which is absolutely phenomenal. And she's joining me all the way from Michigan today. So I really appreciate her time and her energy, everything she's bringing to the table. She's awesome <laughs> enough already. But um, <laughs> some of her hobbies include reading, writing, dancing which is also one of my hobbies and <laughs> creating websites so welcome to the super talented and amazing miss katina davenport owner of knd consultant enterprises it's so good to have you oh i'm glad to be here thanks for having me yes ma'am absolutely so don't forget everybody that's watching i want you to make sure you share this live invite somebody talk to us in the comments any questions that you have about business credit, anything about business in general, because from what I understand from Katina also 
is she takes a very holistic approach to medicine. So even though she specializes in business credit, she also wants to help you uh, with the responsibilities of day-to-day -day life that help you be the best business owner that you can be. And she and I both share that passion. So we're here to do that for you guys tonight. But uh, give us some thumbs up, some hearts in the comments. Be sure to share your names. Tell us that you're here and you're watching. And um, I'll be watching the comments. We'll answer questions and all of that good stuff. But um, before we get started, Ms. Katina, it's going to be real informal, kind of like a chat. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have anything that you would like to open with before we go into the actual structure of tonight's live? Um, well, I just want to pick a piggyback of off of what you said, you know, just bring your questions. If you have questions, you know, we'll do our best to answer them for you. And that's what we're here for on this live tonight. So awesome. we welcome. That's right. All right, you guys. So there are five major things that we're going to be talking about tonight when it comes to business credit. The first one of those is going to be business structure and why it's important. Why, why is it even important to consider talking about and thinking about your business structure when you're thinking about business credit. That's going to be number one. Number two is actually giving you a one on one of what business credit actually is and what it's not. Um, the third thing we're going to talk about tonight is Dun and Bradstreet. If you've ever heard of DMB, we're going to expound on that a little bit. The fourth thing we're going to talk about is what business credit is actually used for. And finally, fifth and last but not least, but we want to give you some real life application and talk about some different scenarios in which you could best use business credit. So um, I will continue. You want to start with business structure or you want me to jump on it first? Oh, I'll go ahead and, and jump on it. So business structure is super important. That's the first step of building business credit. That's not even the business credit part. It's just basically setting up your business in the way that seems credible to lenders, to credit card companies. So they're gonna to want to see that you have a business name that's actually registered as an LLC or S Corp or C Corp. Right. And then they're going to want to see a business address that's other than your home address. So you may start off um, filling out the information online because you can fill out your LLC by yourself online. Mm -hmm. um, you might start off with your home address, but that will be changed once everything gets rolling. Right. Um, and then you want, I'm, I have notes because sometimes I can just lose my way, but uh -uh, just go, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then you want to have your business phone number and then get your EIN number with the IRS. And that is free. Um, a lot of people um, come across a website, and I have before, where there was um, just, just searching out how to um, get my EIN number. And I almost paid $200 for that. Wow. Because it looked exactly like the irs.gov website. That's so everybody, true. be careful with mm -hmm. that. It's absolutely free to get your EIN number. So do not pay for that. Um, and then you want to get your business website and your email. The email should be on the same domain as your website, Absolutely. not a Gmail. You want it to, to make it professional. So when these business, um, the business cards and the uh, lenders go to look up your information, they can see that, you know, everything is professional, that you're listed, even with Google My Business you know, just doing things like that so they can find out who you are. Right. Um, and then you'll need your business bank account. You'll need a business license, depending on what type of business you have. And those people that are in specific industries, they know which business not license they need to have. Um, and then you need to have a merchant account. You have to be able to take payments online from your website, from your phone, from any device, because you never know. You might be at a booth somewhere and cash is not being, you know, exchanged. You want to be able to service everybody that comes to your table. Just, just giving you a scenario. Um, if you're out in the field doing anything, you want to be able to accept credit card payments. So right. that's very important. So that's, that's just basically it. 
Setting up your business with the right foundation will always help you be credible to lenders and business. Uh, I keep saying business bank cards, but his business <laughs> credit cards. This is what's in my mind, but yeah. Yeah, so I agree with you 100%. <clears throat> so the foundation for your business is all about credibility from the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. And that's right. exactly what you're saying. And, uh, and I totally get that. One of the things that I like to tell my clients is really um, the foundation for your business is actually getting you established for so many things in the future. And mm -hmm. so taking care of those things initially, like Katina was just talking about, is important when you're starting a business. Now, some of us have side hustles that we hadn't actually made official or taken on that role or that legal form of business of LLC mm -hmm. or other. But notice that when Katina was talking, she did mention, she did not mention sole proprietorship. She mentioned LLC, C Corp, S Corp, corporations, PLLCs. Mm -hmm. These are the legal forms of business in which you can establish business credit. And it's important to know that. Um, and that credibility needs to be established from the beginning. So the second thing or another thing that she talked about was consistency in who you are. So not just your brand, but your actual identity. And that would include your domain, like she spoke about. Um, mine would be clsmgmt.com. Well, I, my business domain is not just, I have a separate Gmail just for casual things, but mm -hmm. I have an actual work email and it's through Google Workspace. Um, a lot of times, depending on which web host you go with to create your website that she was talking about, they will offer certain packages. And the one that I have with Squarespace offers a Google Workspace package with it. So I can have a professional email address along with that free. So that could be a perk that you find somewhere. Mm -hmm. But my, e my formal email address ends in at clsmgmt.com and not at gmail or at yahoo.com. So making mm -hmm. that formal across the board, because um, Katina, I remember doing a grant application for my business probably about five years ago. It was before all this COVID stuff. And I was shocked that um, the application that I was working on asked me for a work email. And it would not allow me to even enter a Gmail or otherwise mm -hmm. in that application. So, and I learned from that, like really quickly, like, okay, this is not professional enough. And honestly, those type of emails are not secure enough also. So there's, right. there's a reason why work emails are different, but it all has to do with that credibility she was talking about. Um, not to mention the occupational licenses she mentioned, establishing the bank account, now, if you have a bank account, but you have not yet established some type of merchant services to accept payments online, then you need to do that. And there are several different vendors that do that. Um, the bank that you have your business bank account with will likely have those services that they offer also. Mm -hmm. I'd say just compare the rates and the prices to make sure you're taking advantage of what's best for you and your business, but make sure that stuff is out there. But um, that is such good information. Thank you, Katina, like knocking it out of the park from the beginning. Um, hey, Lay, I see you on live. I see some more people. We got a right good many viewers online. Thank you all for chiming in. Don't forget to drop all your questions in the comment section. Give us some hearts, some thumbs up. Be sure to share this live. Tonight is all about business credit. Okay, so we've gotten business structure down now that you know how important it is to establish mm -hmm. the right type of legal form of business and to put your ABCs and one, two, threes in place before you even start thinking about the actual two words, business credit, you got to right. do this stuff first, right? Right. <laughs> right. Uh, That's what's one, worth. one more thing though, about establishing your business foundation, if you're going to go for grants, they're going to want to see all kinds of documentation. Boom. And you have to have it right. So don't even apply for a grant if you're paperwork is not right don't even do it <laughs> don't even do it don't look at it so right. there's a grant that's open right now that I've been pushing on my group page and even on my personal pages and it's and it's in North Carolina it's the business recovery grant it's phase two of it that's open in North Carolina right now and the deadline for that is June 1st but I just got through watching another uh, webinar on it today hosted by NCDOR 
and they were talking about how you honestly almost need to be sitting down with your tax papers next to you if you don't really know your stuff when you're filling out this application. Mm -hmm. So that's just one gold nugget for you guys in North Carolina that are tuning in tonight if you plan on doing that. And that's if you've suffered economic loss due to the pandemic. So if you've just started your business like in 2021, this will not pertain to you if that helps anybody up front too. Mm -hmm. All right. So the big question, the elephant in the room, what is business credit? Big <laughs> what question. Is business credit? Katina, right. are you ready? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell us so, what is business credit? So I wrote something down to answer okay. this question. Let's do it. So let's see. What is business credit? It is, it's just pretty much taking your business financial information, separating it from your personal. And what you're doing is you're building trade lines and you're having signals going to a place called Duns and Bradstreet. And so they'll start giving you a business credit score. So this is what I'm, I'm teaching you, just kind of like the, the basics of what's going on. Um, and then there's Experian, and then there is also Equifax business. This is all data that points to your business. So right. if you are late on any payments, as far as your business is concerned, that will get reported to the business credit bureaus. And so when you're building your business credit, it's, it's a lot like building your personal credit because you're getting mm -hmm. different trade lines right but you're doing it on the business side so <clears throat> if you were brand new to personal credit you might get an unsecured card you might have an authorized user and you start that way and then you go and get your first credit card you might get a car note some might somebody might have to you know sign for that as no a co-signer um, and then you get a house, a mortgage, you know, just different things, a lease on an apartment. All of these things point to your social security number. They point to you. Right. So that's information about how you're able to pay your, your bills. If you're able to pay your bills on time, if you're late, anything like that. And that's how people determine if they want to lend to you in the future. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with business. You have to keep that in mind. So you're building your trade lines, you're building, you're going to different places that will allow you to get credit from their store, Amazon, Sam's Club, you have uh, gas cars, you, or you have um, places that where you can get business supplies, mm -hmm. computers, you know, just different things like that, that will help your business grow. So right. like you're helping your personal finances to grow with personal credit. You're helping your business finances to grow with business credit. So awesome. hope, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I think it makes perfect sense. And that's really, um, that's how I like to liken business credit is almost as if it were your personal credit. It's just mm -hmm. sending the signals under a different identifier, under a different number, right? It's not your social security number, it's now your tax ID. Um, and I like to also compare a business or liken a business to an actual individual. So mm -hmm. think of your business as being its own person. And mm -hmm. really that's how American economies operate is we look at corporations as if they're their own people, if we, for lack of a better word, but they're their own entities. It's outside of you. You mm -hmm. are not personally responsible for the taxes, for the tax responsibility on that business, but that business itself that's why with things like LLCs, which is limited liability corporations, like the, the tax liability and the responsibility if you get sued won't fall directly on you, right? Exactly. It's all directed towards the business. And mm -hmm. so just think about separating your business from yourself, but you would want your personal credit record to look good. You know, you would want that personal track record to look the best that it possibly could. And the mm -hmm. entity that's used as that um, that hub, if you will, for retain for retaining your business credit information is done in Bradstreet, and like she said, it just sends signals to business credit bureaus 
to where if you're paying the bills on time, then you get good results. If you're not, then you get poor results and you can expand it. Um, help me contain a little bit with this, but um, I, I would say this, what I've heard a lot of um, financial experts say is that the way to gain true wealth is not through borrowing money to get further in debt. So you don't borrow money just to buy things that are fleeting or that are assets okay. that are terrible, terribly liquid, but you borrow money to purchase long-term assets, things that could earn you more money in the future. Mm -hmm. So why not do that same thing for your business? Exactly. If you're borrowing, you know, make sure that it's something that's going to help build your business and mm -hmm. not something that's going to be fleeting. Or I'd say if it's maybe what? something that you're not going to use again in another year, mm -hmm. then it may not be the best type of investment for you to use your business credit on. Would you say that? Absolutely. That's Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you, you, you use your business credit to further grow your business. So a lot of people, when they want to expand their business, they don't know that they don't have business credit at all. And they've been doing everything in their personal credit for years. Mm -hmm. And so now they want to start building that. It's going to take some time, but they're seeing the importance of having that filler in between so that they can do what they need to do, whether it's marketing. Um, we have a client right now that's, you know, really wanting to expand their business into something really big right mm -hmm. um and then we have <clears throat> people who want to get the word out about their business or have more inventory that's what you use your business credit for to grow your business mm -hmm. you hire experts you bring people on in your team that will help you with sales marketing advertising anything that would get you customers and clients that's Definitely. probably the best place where you should put your business credit, any funding that you get, any business credit that you get, that's where you put it. Uh, look, so DeAndre Davenport just jumped in the comments, right? <laughs> and he articulated what I was trying to, he says, use the good debt to build mm -hmm. wealth. Mm -hmm. That's it, is those what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, those seven words. Use your good debt to build wealth. Exactly. So, Take that borrowing concept and put it toward the things that you can use to build long-term things that are going to bring you good results and just help you overall build. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, I'm learning stuff tonight, y'all. <laughs> but that's what you get when you're around an expert. <laughs> um, so if anybody has any questions about what business credit is or how do you get it, any questions at all about business credit tonight, be sure to drop them in the comments. Share this live on your pages. Share it, share it, share it. It's good information tonight. So we've talked about the importance of having the right type of business structure before you even think about business credit. Mm -hmm. And now we know what business credit actually is. And we understand the concept of it. It is very similar to personal credit and how you would treat it or look at it defined. Um, but now let's talk about that hub or that entity we talked about. We mentioned a few minutes ago called Dun and Bradstreet. So what that is and what it does, um, Katina, you want to take off with DMB? Yeah, so Duns and Bradstreet is the most popular or the, the top business credit bureau. And what you do is after you get your business established, situated, you go and apply for Duns number. And it's a unique identifier that identifies your business with these numbers. And once you start building your business credit for, as far as going out to apply for vendors and they approve you and you start paying back your uh, invoices on time within the 30 days, 15 days, 55 days, right. however long you know the, the, the net accounts are, you do that, it starts sending signals, hey, this person or this business is actually a good business to work with. Right. And then they will 
give you what is called a paydex score. And that's like a personal credit score. So you might start off with a 80. That's almost like an 800, you know, as far as a personal credit score. The other business credit bureaus, their numbers, are, they're, you know, different than right. Duns and Bradstreet. But that's not all. Duns and Bradstreet will actually give somebody information as far as are you a risk to work with? Mm. So if you have a contract that's on the line mm -hmm. with another major business, they're going to look up your information with Duns and Bradstreet to see how well you are paying your bills. And they want to see you paying on time. If you have anything negative reporting, anything going against your business, any lawsuits, anything. And they want to be able to mm -hmm. see that I can work with this person. They're trustworthy. Everything that they said about their business, their business address, their, their the business name, the phone number, everything is right. All so it's, it's all data. That's pretty much what it is. I see. It. It's data driven. Mm -hmm. Follow the numbers. Yeah, follow the numbers. That's what it is. So you want to get hooked up with that so you can start at least getting yourself onto, um, you know, to those, those data points. And anybody can look up your information about your business. Right, right. Anybody. Anybody can. Mm -hmm. Anybody can. So you, we got a couple of questions, Katina. Okay. Um, well, first one is a comment, another one by Mr. DeAndre Davenport that says, <laughs> Use your credit to purchase income producing assets for your business. That's it. That's the name of the game right there. That's mm -hmm. how you really create wealth in your business. And that's how you really set a foundation, a scalable foundation for your operations in your business. That's how you can, I won't say easily expand your business, but that's what it's founded upon is purchasing incoming producing assets for your business. Um, mm -hmm. If you have questions about what income producing assets would look like for your business, you could drop that in the comments too. That would be like a conversation that would be outside of this live, but mm -hmm. either one of us would be happy to schedule a consult with you guys to further talk about that. I would direct you to the lady uh, on this side of me. I think, no, this side of me, I was pointing <laughs> in the right direction. I got to make, I got to look at the screen, make sure I'm pointing in the right direction, but uh, I would direct you to Katina for the uh, if you would like to schedule a consult with her. And when we get to the end of this live, she's going to share information of how you can reach her directly. Okay, but some of the questions that we're getting ready to tackle. All right, one of them is, if you're, what if your business is home-based? What do you recommend as a business address? Okay, so if your business is home-based, you can go to a site called regis.com. Mm -hmm. That's R-E-G-U-S dot com. And you can pay for a business um, business address, which would be roughly around $50, depending on what state you're in. I don't know if it's the same across the board, but the basic, pass, the basic package is $50. You can receive mail for your business. You can um, set up business meetings there. You can rent rooms. That's a place where you can start setting up your office. That'll be your headquarters. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend that you use those type of uh, facilities for that. Okay. All right. So Shavante, I hope that helps answer your question. If you have a home-based business, mm -hmm. um, you are not going to want to use your personal home address when you're establishing business credit. Is that right, Katina? That's right. Because oh, no. the lenders will see, oh, that's a home. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. They want to see something other than that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. So, Shavante, I hope that helps. Let us know if you have any more questions. All right. Lay as Lay Davis wants to know, um, <clears throat> do I need a Dunn's number and what is it used for? So, um, you definitely need one. But you have yes. to have the right legal form of business. And I think, Lay, you may be an LLC. I think Lay's Boutique may be an LLC. If I remember from looking, um, looking at your information on the group page and visiting your pages too, you definitely need to be an LLC and you definitely do need a DUNS number. Mm -hmm. It is 
free. Getting a DUNS number is free. Right. The website you go to is dnb.com. Mm -hmm. D is in dog, N is in Nancy, B is in boy. dnb.com. And it is pretty, it's a pretty user-friendly site. Wouldn't you say, Katina? Yes, it's very user-friendly. One thing I want to mention is because I, I want to be transparent as possible. When you want to pull your business credit reports from Duns and Bradstreet, there is a fee for that. So if you yes. want to sign up for that, you can have like a monthly fee. I think I pay maybe, I forgot, $29.99. Yeah, it's or, not really expensive. It's not much. Mm -hmm. It's not much. So you can do that and monitor your business credit reports every single month. They'll tell you if anything fraudulent is going on. Right. So you want to have that service. Mm -hmm. You need you need to have it. And like Katina <laughs> was saying earlier, they are the largest um, business, the business credit reporting bureau that's out mm -hmm. there. I mean, there's not few people that you can mention done in Bradstreet too that have owned businesses for a while, especially LLCs or other corporations that, or when you start talking about business credit, DMB should come up somewhere in that conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, something else that Katina mentioned, we're not going to go into what the actual business credit scores are, but like she said, once you have um, established that business credit number and everything with DMB, you become eligible for what they call a payday score. Mm -hmm. And that is your business credit score. Yep. Good questions, y'all. All right, what's going, what else is going on in the comments? Yep, your business credit score tells the financial institutions that you are less risky and yes. that's what you want. Um, you want people to take a chance on you, but think about you yourself. If you were going to invest in something in your own business, you're going to look at what the risk is compared to what type of return on investment you'll get. Absolutely. So that's, that's what any lender would look for, right? And that, mm -hmm. that credibility and evaluate how much risk you're posing. If it's too risky, they're not going to take a chance on you. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if it's like a, maybe low to moderate risk, you have a much better chance, like she said, of winning that contract of against some of your competition when mm -hmm. you're sending out those proposals. All right. In comments, in the comments, let's see. Using postal, but still ask for personal. I want them completely separate. Yeah, Shavante. So if you do the Regis.com website, it will totally give you a separate address for your mm -hmm. business. Yeah, totally separate. Oh, you're welcome, Lay. I'm glad we could answer your questions. Oh, DeAndre said you got to pay to play. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Ashton West. Um, oh, business phone number. Um, I can give a suggestion for a business phone number and Katina can give her suggestions too. For mm -hmm. me personally, um, I use a website called Freedom Voice and that fee for me is about $10 a month and I get a toll free number with that. Mm -hmm. I like Freedom Voice because I also, I can, my fax number and phone number are interchangeable. So both of those features for me are the same number. So my 800 number that you see for CLS management, you can either call me on that number or you can fax to that number. And you can set it up as if it were voice over IP. So you could set it up for different phone lines if you would like to um, mm -hmm. push one for this, push two for that. You can set up your own, um, almost like a call center type feel and auto attendant is the word that I'm looking for, well, the words that I'm looking for. You can set up your own auto attendant, but that's what I use for my business phone number. Katina, what do you use? I use Dialpad. Mm -hmm. So you can go to a, a, a website called dialpad.com and you can get an 800 number or a local number in your city. And, you know, it's voice over IP. You can use it on your cell phone or your iPad. Um, you can use it on your computer. So awesome. it's, yeah, it's awesome. Um, they have, <laughs> they have um, video conferencing too. Mm -hmm. And text messaging. Oh, I might so, have to switch. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to switch. Yeah, it's, I, I love it. Awesome. So there's a, there's some suggestions for business phone number, Shavante. All right, Ashton West, Ashton asks, do you suggest using Google to obtain a business phone number for free? 
No. You the reason why. That. Okay. No, no, because they're going to know that it's from Google. I don't even know how they know the, when I say they, the lenders, the lenders, the credit card company, I'm like, no, this is a Google number. Wow. They know everything. Wow. They have okay. systems, software, they can tell what's going on before you know. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So I was just, just get one of those uh, suggestions that we had. Yours is good. It was $10. I think Dowcat is like 20 or 25. Mm -hmm. So it's for all the, for all the features, it sounds like Dowcat offers like that's worth it. Yeah, it is mm -hmm. worth it. The further you go up, you know, the fees are more uh, mm -hmm. because you can make your own call center just from using right. Dowcat. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause if you, um, if you start, uh, if you have, when you actually do get a physical location and you start calling in these phone companies to come put in these modems yeah. And all these voice over IP systems is, is thousands of dollars, man. It's thousands yeah. of dollars. And for us as entrepreneurs, um, we can't exactly invest in some of those lucrative services from the jump. Right. right. <laughs> or even a little bit later. So we look for affordability because affordability and flexibility is what entrepreneurs need. Absolutely. God knows. So, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm glad we could give you those recommendations. Mm -hmm. All right. What else is blowing up in the comments here? All right, Lay wants to know if that works for lawn care services too. Just asking because my husband owns a lawn care company. So I need a little bit more context, Lay. Are you, do you mean um, the phone number or do you mean the address or the establishing the business credit and needing the legal form of business? Give me a little bit more context before I answer that question. And let's see, back at Shavante, um, I'll be opening... Let's see, we'll be opening a second business, do another LLC, two different industries. Mm -hmm. So, Shavante, are you saying that you're going to open another LLC and do it from two separate entities and you need some more information on that? So, y'all just give me a little bit more context and let me know exactly what it is you're asking so we can go back. All right. Oh, Frida Gore asked, what was the fee for Dialpad? You said it was around $20, right, Katina? Mm -hmm. Yep, $20, $25. All right. For one line. You're welcome, Ashton. I'm glad we could help you. Uh, let's see. And DeAndre did answer um, Lay's question. He said it does work for lawn care services too, Lay. Two of their clients um, at KND Consulting, uh, two of their clients have lawn care companies and they've been able to help them. So, Katina, your partner is in comments just on it tonight. You got some like <laughs> major support. I'm gonna have to get me a partner. Like I, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna have to get me a partner like that, man. Just diving in the comments, like helping answer questions. I love it. All right. Um, no problem, Lay. No problem. And you're welcome, everybody. I'm glad we could help. So share this live. It's all about business credit. We're talking about what it is and what it's not. Um, how to establish it, business credit reporting bureaus, uh, your business structure. And we've gotten through the first three topics that we had uh, tonight, the fourth one. Now we want to talk about what you can actually use business credit for. Okay. What can you use it for? So let's talk about that for a minute. Katina, you ready? Yep. All right. All right. So there's so many things that you can use right. for. <laughs> all right buy office supplies yes. so whether you're working out of your home or you're working out of regis you're going to need paper pens notebooks headsets whatever office supplies are always in need that's like one of the first things i bought how many papers and pens can i buy <laughs> you know what and some of them with my name on them right <laughs> marketing materials yep mm -hmm. uh, computers you can buy computers ipads uh phones you can buy uh, supplies for your contracting um contracting business so let's say you fix and flip houses and you can go to lowe's home depot and be able to get business credit from them, get all of your supplies on credit, 
pay it back once you get your um, your money coming in. I mean, it's a done deal. So definitely that. You can buy snacks for your vending machine. Oh, <laughs> if I you love have it. a vending machine business, I all the it. snacks and drinks that you can get, go to Sam's Club. You know, go to Sam's Club. They have all of these little um, things where you can buy in bulk. Exactly. Buy in bulk. Chips, cookies, everything that you can stock your vending machines with. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you can apply for business credit cards and use your business credit cards for paying payroll. So you can take the cash off of it, put it into the bank, pay your employees. You can, <laughs> yeah, you can do it gets, that. It gets good. I like yeah. seriously, it gets good. Like once you once you have it and you know what to do with it, like mm -hmm. oh my gosh, it's amazing. You can even just you can pay yourself with it. I mean, just take the cash off of it, put yourself on payroll, write yourself a check, cash a check, put it into your personal bank account. There you go. That's and it. see a lot of. A lot of business owners don't think to put themselves on payroll. You can right. actually do that. You can but you, do need, that. To. Yes, you, need, you need to. Yes, you do. <laughs> because, I mean, well, how are you going to get your income? You know? Right. Pay yourself. Pay yourself. So it pays for marketing services. It pays for hiring employees, advertising, getting a company car. Because you might need a vehicle um, to for transportation, carrying certain things. Buy a truck. You need a Mack truck? Right. Buy yourself a Mack truck. You're going to need something. You're going to need something to haul some stuff with. Right. <laughs> so any business, I mean, even if you're a doctor opening, opening up their own practice, they, they're going to need business credit. And so one of the things that I saw, and I'm going into the different scenarios, and I know I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Uh-uh, jump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping with you. It's all right. We're jumping together. Let's go. <laughs> all right. So a doctor I worked for when I was in college, um, I noticed that he would always come to me and say, okay, can you buy different calendars? What do you need for your desk? Mm -hmm. I was like, I buy it. Okay. He gave me a, a, a book. It was Quill. Mm -hmm. Quill.com. That's one of the vendors that you yep, can go Quill. To. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I was picking out different things. We're like, oh, this is nice. I want this, this, this. I decorated my whole desk. And he didn't care. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and when I look back on it, he was building business credit business for his credit. practice. Yep. And That's he was right. a PLLC. So he yep. had a he had one of those. Right. So now that I look back at it, I'm like, man. <laughs> That's exactly what he was doing. What he it was, was doing the whole time. Yes, and yep. we would have these big boxes coming in. Oh, this is Katina's. This is this is Cindy's. This is whoever. Yep. So mm -hmm. everybody, everybody had stuff, and it was a no brainer. They didn't care. Just use yep. the business credit. That's what it's for. And all mm -hmm. he had to do was pay it back. So any bonuses and stuff that we were getting, I was wondering how that was happening. Mm -hmm. I started looking at accounts receivables. I was like, oh, he's got different credit cards, loans going on. Right. So there's stuff. So it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It could be a dentist, a doctor, a lawyer, uh, a carpenter, a plumber. Everybody needs business credit and they will they need it for different things. So if you have a situation where you have clients that will pay you in 30 days right but you need your money now mm -hmm. you know you can use your business credit your business credit cards to fund those gaps like i was saying pay yourself right. right but the thing about business credit is it gets you ready for business funding exactly the loans the you know the uh, merchant advances anything that you can think of the sba loans Mm -hmm. uh, we, were dealing right. with the, we were dealing with the client that went for SBA loan. They said they couldn't get it because they didn't have business credit. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you need business credit, even if you're going for SBA loan. That's right. You do. So, just to keep that in mind, guys. So. Man, look, 
<laughs> so what can you do with business credit? What can, what are the things you could buy from it? Y'all heard us say office supplies, things for contracting, your office equipment, telecommunications mm-hmm. equipment, telephones, fax machines, copy machines, um, buy snacks for your vending machine business. Now, look, I'm going to tell y'all a little secret. I'm trying <laughs> to get into the vending machine business. I'm also trying to get into the ATM business <laughs> because mm-hmm. I learned that you could purchase ATMs. Yes, and I did. You too. can actually own them and collect the fees off of them. So I've actually yes. even identified some locations where I want to put ATMs here locally in my town, but we ain't talking about that. <laughs> we're not talking about multiple streams of income tonight we're talking about business credit but the fact of the matter is as i can acquire those things with mm-hmm. business credit okay yep. and those are assets that could generate wealth for me you guys exactly. get it if you have employees she said you can cash advance off of a credit card and pay out your payroll i hope y'all are listening to this tonight because this is some super good stuff your marketing that you need to do. Marketing helps you reach your target audience. When you reach your target audience, the people who will most benefit from the value of your products and services, they will buy more from you. That is increasing your bottom line, okay? Mm-hmm. But business credit is providing funding for you guys. Um, that, that's in turn what it is. Everybody, um, a lot of people ask me about how can I get capital? Where can I get working capital? Where can I get startup capital? A lot of these things, but um, startup capital would not actually come from business credit because you hadn't had time to build, build it because you're starting up. Right. But working capital, when you get further down the line and you have this DMB number and this pay, this uh, credit established, you got paid X scores and all that stuff going, you can be paying for things like putting together networking events for you to meet more people and together. And it, so it's so much that you can do with business credit. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay. It's so much. <laughs> we got questions and it's 747. I told you, Katrina, I only mean for these things to run like 45 minutes. <laughs> and then somewhere along the line, um, it gets good because you my special my special guests are always awesome, like you are. And so it's easy to share good information. So it's easy to talk about something that you know about. Great. All right. You ready for us to hit these questions again, girl? Yes. All right. Uh DeAndre said on a larger scale. You pay salary with business credit. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, Shavante asks, how do you get business credit with Sam's and Amazon? So do uh, you want to tackle that, Katina? Well, there's a lot to it because the underwriting requirements for that is a list. It's about 12 to 15 things that you got to be able to hit. So the first thing is to make sure that your business is set up properly. Mm -hmm. And then you got to have an 80 paid X scores to get any of those things. Um, So I know that's probably like the, the fastest trend that's going on right now because Amazon, people shop at Amazon all the time. You can go to Sam's Club all of the time. And to get net, 30 accounts, net 55 accounts with that would just be, you know, a dream come true because that's, these are places that we shop all of the time. Right. Um, but to actually get those things, um, if you go into those groups and you see people applying and they're like, oh, I'm getting denied and different things like that, it's because they're not actually following what the rules are. Some of these places, I, I believe with Sam's Club and with, um, Amazon, you have to be in business for a certain amount of time. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. So if you're just in business for like three months, don't even apply for it because they're going to deny you. Yeah. So you got to have everything in place. I I don't remember off the top of my head of all of the things that you got to hit, but it is a lot of them. It's a lot. It's It's, a lot. It's a lot. But if you can get in the door. Yes. (laughs) If you can get in the door, man, you got yeah. it made. But that that is exactly. something, um, Shavante, I would encourage you to read more over, uh, read over that even more because I think you've been in business for a little while now. So um, let's dig further into that. And if either one of us can help you with looking into that, with um, getting that business credit established with Sam's and Amazon, we, we can try to set up a consult with you to um, see what it would look like, what that picture would look like for you. 
Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Ashton, I'm a home-based travel agent through a host agency. How do I put myself on payroll to write a check to my personal bank account? Okay, so this is my personal example from my business, right? Okay. So we, we signed up for a service called ADP, which yep, is a ADP. tech service. Mm -hmm. So um, you go through the, the steps, the process, and they approve you for an account. You just hook up your, your business bank account to the ADP service. They'll take care of taking out the taxes and everything according to you know, federal laws and for your state. And then when you're ready to cut yourself a check, you can do it bi-weekly. You can do it every week. You can do it every month. Once you're ready, once you establish that, you just have to make sure you have that amount of money in your bank account, plus their fee for the month because there's a fee to use these different services. And once you do that, you know, you can pay yourself, you can pay yourself by ACH, or you can have a physical check delivered to your business, uh, your, your, your business address. Mm. And then you put it into your bank account. Now you can, as an LLC, you can take whatever money you have in your bank and you want to move it over to your personal bank account. You can do that too. Mm -hmm. It's just that when you put yourself on payroll, you, you have a systematic way of taking out the taxes. You'll get a W-2 at the end of, the, uh, end of the year. You get to file taxes. You get to do all those things when you okay. put yourself on payroll. That, that's it. Yep. So it's, and I'm trying, let's see, because she says she's a travel agent through a host agency. Even if she's working through a host agency, she can still establish her own business. Yes, yeah, and can. operate under her business name. And exactly. Ashton, if you hadn't done that, um, this is really off the cuff, so you may not want to follow it verbatim word for word. But from what it sounds like, from what we can hear, if you're working for a host agency, you still need to establish your own business name and legal form of business that you're going to operate under, even if you're working for a host agency. Mm -hmm. But that way, you can still build your own business credit because what that host agency is doing is they're building all of that stuff for them right mm -hmm. and in essence they're treating you like their employee but you could still flip that and become your own employee and like um katina is saying to have your own business bank account and then have your own payroll services going where you could pay yourself out of that same thing so you could do what you're doing just um create it as if it were in tiers t-i-e-r-s like create tiers of that. If you would think about how that business is operating, there's a host agency, then there's your business that you're operating from that host agency and you're creating your own payroll and establishing your own business credit attached to what you're doing personally. But you still get to use their marketing materials and all that kind of stuff. So it's a win-win. So there's a way that you could do that. All right, that's good stuff. All right, Crystal, Crystal, Miss Crystal White asks for business credit, or she may be making a comment. Let me see. For no nope, question, for business credit uh, for newbies, from what I understand, we start with net 30 for about six months. Then we keep building until we can go to tier two, eventually getting to Amazon. Is that right? Well, you can actually, depending on how fast you work, you can go through all of the tiers because there's four tiers. It could take you nine months. It could take you a year. It just depends on how fast you work. So if you stay dedicated and focused, you can have a company car by six months. You can you know, have Amazon and, and all those things very quickly. Just as long awesome. as, yeah, just you know, start with three. And then you build three more. Then you go mm -hmm. three more again. So it's, it's different tiers, but you, you have to know which places to apply because it stacks on itself. Mm. So you get the easier accounts first. And then gotcha. you just keep going up levels. Gotcha. Yep. You want the specifics on that? 
you need to be contacting Katina for yeah, consultation. Because <laughs> yeah. there's only so much that we're going to be able to share on this live here. But um, like this stuff is golden, y'all, that she's giving you. Like really, like this stuff is amazing what she's giving. So Crystal, I hope that that helps some, sweetheart. Um, let's see, is it beneficial if we have paid, if we have two paid vehicles to transfer one into the business name? Would you transfer a vehicle into to into the name into a, to an LLC or to a business name? I probably wouldn't. Mm. I probably wouldn't. I if I wanted to get a vehicle, I would just outright get it in you know the business name instead of going through the. You can transfer it, but me personally, if you were asking me personally, I just wouldn't do it. Mm. And that, that was the second part of her question, or is that not beneficial, especially with it raising insurance rates? Well, the thing is, you also want to think about your personal credit. So if you are paying on your, your cars, if you have a car note, paying every month and paying on time is actually beneficial to your personal credit. So now you take that away from your personal credit. How does that? affect your personal credit score if you're taking it from you know the personal side and putting it over to your business mm -hmm. so you have to think of it like that too because I always think of think of both because you know personal credit is important too mm -hmm. as well as business credit so let me ask you this Katina say that she owned the vehicle mm -hmm. and she wanted to transfer the vehicle over to the business and because and use it as an asset could that mm -hmm. be used as like collateral for a, a business loan that she may want to take out? That I don't know. That I don't know. But she, if if she outright owned it, yeah, by all means, if you think it's going to, you know, help you, transfer it over into the business name. Yeah. But it, it sounds like it may be more of a um, an individual type thing. Yeah, it's an individual it's type something thing. difficult to generalize. Right. Depends on the situation. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. DeAndre, the American dream is personal and business credit. You move some <laughs> things around. When you learn how to work around money, you move you shift some things around. Yep. All right. Yeah, Crystal. Uh, she said she tried the SBA and they wanted her to um put up her land and she shut it right down. <laughs> yeah, because they want collateral. Putting up my land. <laughs> they want collateral. Yes. And whatever collateral you have they want you to put that up. So you always got to keep that in mind. If you, they'll find it. Wow. <laughs> they will find it because Man. they're using your, your, um, your social security number <laughs> and whatever is attached to your social security number. They're like, oh, she got land. Let me. Oh, that's assets. Let's yeah. they find your assets real quick. Yep. They put it a little the uh the government federal government will put a lien on what you have if you exactly. owe them something. they exactly. know what you have they know what you own all right let's see yeah deandre says business gas cards i hadn't even thought about that all right anything else oh chris Dow says she has her first business gas card yes ma'am all right you go, girl. Two snaps for Crystal. <laughs> yes, car. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Let's see. My business products come from their spending personal right now. Yep. And it's uh it's difficult becoming a new entrepreneur because it's like um we do initially we do pour a lot of our personal assets and our personal finances into building our business and i think one thing that's super important for us to remember is um we are not meant to stay there like mm -hmm. our our um our personal finances are are not meant to continually sustain a business that should be sustaining itself we should be on a journey to having a sustainable business where that business is able to take care of its own expenses, uh, cover its own uh, expense of operations, generate its own revenue, its you know income and expenses and the um, net profit and what's necessary for you to keep your operation scalable. 
That's what you want to be climbing toward, not to continue to use your personal finances to finance your business. Mm -hmm. And some of the people that can help you overcome those hurdles are awesome CEOs like Ms. Katina that you can consult with, with this amazing information that she's been so kind to give us tonight, because this is some really good stuff, y'all. But um, she would be the perfect person, one of the perfect people to come in contact with. And you should be building relationships with folks like her, with uh, professional accountants or CPAs, you know, mm -hmm. even your local bank where you have your business account, your business bankers can sometimes give you good information. They may, mm -hmm. they may wind up being kind of biased because they're going to like to sell you their products ultimately, but sometimes they have good information and you just have to have that boundary on where to draw the line or, okay, are you trying to give me information or are you just trying to sell me something? So knowing the difference with that is super important. All right, let's see. Uh, yes, ma'am, Miss Lay, you can definitely contact me later. Um, it is, oh my gosh, is it eight o'clock for real? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna I'm try to wind some of this stuff up. Um, let's see, anything else here? Ashton says, okay, I have my LLC and a business bank account. Just didn't know how I could transfer money from my business account to my personal account. And that would be the best way to do it is to set herself up on payroll, right, Ms. Katina? She can set herself on payroll. If you, if she has her business account with her personal bank too, because I have that as well, you can mm -hmm. still transfer money to your personal uh, bank account. You still can. Yep. But if you wanted to set yourself up on payroll, yes, by all means, go ahead and do that. Awesome. Hey, Jason English, I'm glad you were able to get on tonight, my classmate. All right. Yeah, I'm glad. Okay. Now, Miss Katina, Mr. Davenport would like for you to tell everybody about your business credit builder tool before we wind <laughs> things up. <laughs> okay. The business credit builder tool is actually a software um, that we have our clients working on and we give them access to this tool and it takes them step-by-step -step instructions on how to do everything. So it takes you through building your business foundation, setting up your business credit reports, as well as monitoring them and show you how to do that. If there are any discrepancies, you can actually um, fix them. Mm -hmm. And then you start building your business credit with different vendors. We have over a hundred vendors in this particular tool with the links, all of the underwriting requirements and tell, it'll tell you step-by-step step if you need to make a phone call rather than going online. So they give you the tips and tactics that you need to um, get a yes. And that's what we're striving for a yes. a yes. So you'll know exactly what they're looking for. You have everything at your disposal. Plus we have a team of financial advisors that will help, you know, if you get stuck as well. So that's it. That is it. Oh my gosh. All right, you guys, let's see. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. That will actually, that's going to wind things up for us tonight, y'all. We really appreciate um, everybody tuning in, um, listening in tonight. And there was just, I, I don't even know how to put it in the words. All I know is we had a great live tonight <laughs> talking about <laughs> business credit, what it is, how to build it. Um, I learned so much stuff here tonight myself. Um, no thank y'all crystal is like thank thank us no thank y'all for tuning in tonight we appreciate everybody who tuned in to learn um be sure to share this live again share the information i think this is actually one of the lives that i'm going to try to save on the page to always have it up just because it's such core raw information that's good for everybody so tonight we talked about business structure what is business credit what it's not uh dun and bradstreet who they are what they do what you can use business credit for. And we even gave you some really good scenarios of how to use business credit once you establish it. Um, Katina, I want you to let everybody know how to reach you and how to follow you on your different platforms if they wanna um, take advantage of some of your services, but tell us where we can find you and follow you. 
Okay, you can follow me on Facebook. You can search for Katina Davenport. Uh, my husband and I, we have a page together called Katina DeAndre Davenport. You can, um, you can find um, our business pages, uh, business credit for small business, as well as KD Consulting Enterprises. And if you want to reach us by phone number, uh, by telephone, you can call us at 313-314-6472. That's my business line. I don't mind giving it out because we want you to call. So <laughs> go ahead. Right. You guys heard it here first. Um, as always, I'm Cynthia, a CLS management owner, small business consultant and growth strategy. I love putting these things together to help you guys learn, build and grow your own businesses. You can follow me on all major platforms at um, my handle is at CLSMGMT. If you need me on anything at all, or you can also visit my website, to learn more about what I do, how I do it. CLSMGMT.com. Look for yellow and black. And if you're looking for Katina, look for black and white. But we are so glad that we can help everybody tonight. We pray that you all go get your blessings. Thank you, Miss Katina, for joining me. I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you for glad the information to be here. right here. So glad we're, we're here. we connected now. It's yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So, lots more networking from North Carolina all the way to Michigan. I send all my love and thank you so much, sis. All right. You guys. Thank have you. Bye, y'all. Thank you.